the fabulous Sir Michael Gambon. <laughs> Come sit down and relax. And I think, I think that was the David Getter walk on uh, yeah. remix they, yeah. they did by myself. Hey, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank I'm you. a huge like fan. My socks. I love your socks. Yeah, sure. You're very dapper. You've got it going on. This I is did it special for tonight. Are you a, are you a dandy yourself? Are you, are you no, I'm normally dressed in rags behind you coming on here tonight. <laughs> so Has you made the effort? On. Yeah. Uh, I'm su not surprised. I'm thrilled to have you because I know you don't often do these kind of shows. Well, I'm too shy. So uh, tonight I'm just taking a risk. Well, I'm filled you up. <laughs> we'll, we'll go as gently with you as we can. Um, I've, read, I've read a lot of interviews over the years, and sometimes uh, I've read stuff which I'm not entirely sure... It's true. ...is true. Yeah. Would I do be... tell terrible lies, usually. What kind of uh, tales have you told? Well, I don't know. I once, told, I once told an interviewer that I was a dancer at the Royal Ballet. <laughs> And he said, how long you... I said, three years I've danced at the Royal Valley. And um, on the, after the third year, I fell off the stage and threw well through the kettle drum. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are the sort of lies I tell, childish lies. Uh, why do you tell them? I don't know, just for the sake of... Like, now I never know what to say, so I just say little lies. So you make something up? Yeah. OK. Um, I first probably uh, became aware of you, I'm sure, like a lot of people, uh, TV work, when I saw you in The Singing Detective. Yeah. How was that working with, with Dennis Potter? How was that? How was that experience? Great. I hardly knew him. He, he said to me, I was very anxious because he's an intellectual man, I didn't really know him, and then he said, you don't speak to me, do you? I said, no, I don't know what to say, Dennis. He said, well, what's your interest in life? I said, well, I like motor cars. So every time I met Dennis Potter after that, he'd say to me, have you seen the new Ford Anglia, Michael? <laughs> like taking the piss. You know? So I didn't really know him well. Uh, you know, when you made Sing Detective, did you think it would be a hit? Because he's such a strange and. No, and I remember the director ask, asking me on the bed that day. When I played most of it in bed, didn't I? With that one. Yeah. He's saying, Do you think this is going to be a hit? I said, I don't know. I had no idea. It all seemed so broken up when you shoot it. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, it was. It was God. huge, of yeah. course. And it's still yeah. kind of, I don't know if people have still seen it, but you haven't even get it on DVD. It's an yeah. incredible. Which, but I, I would have thought quite an uncomfortable experience with that makeup on the whole time. Yeah. Oh, I've got black hair. That's about 25 years ago. 25 years ago. I've got a clip, um, which, you know, of something even earlier than that. I was going to show a clip from that, but I thought, when you see that out of context, it kind of yeah. diminishes it. You can't really see that. Uh, but it's a clip from... You're in one of my favourite British horror movies of the 1970s. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you remember Coming making up. The Beast Must Die. Oh, don't mention that. Yeah, we... <laughs> it's in... No, come on, it's a cracker. Uh, it's got Peter Cushing in. This is Sir Michael Gambon way back when. It's the worst film I've ever made. <laughs> that was how they did it back then. <laughs> Ah, oh dear. That's, that, that's the best I've ever been. <laughs> no. But, but, you know, it looked like... I imagine that was a lot of fun to make. Well, it was hard to make, because I kept laughing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you got rid of me, I couldn't keep a straight face. It's the least convincing werewolf oh, I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but now I imagine you've reached a whole different audience with the Harry Potter films. Oh, yeah. I've been on... I think I was seven years on those. Wow. I took over the part, and uh, they've been the greatest years of my... Acting life, really, they've been fantastic. In what way, though? Because it's not the most challenging role, I would have thought. No, it's quite simple, really. I just copied uh, Richard Harris, put a different costume on, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then towards the end, um, J.K. Rowling told, said that I was gay. Yeah, well, Dumbledore was gay. She so outed I, Dumbledore. She yeah. outed me yeah. and apologised. Wrote me a letter apologising <laughs> for that. So I had to play him gay from then on, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, Daniel Radcliffe soon put a stop to that. So. You weren't... Uh, the, uh, it wasn't sort of, like, noticeably more camp, I don't think, but there were one or two lines when we knew he was gay, and I remember seeing there was one scene in... I think it was the last one film where you're in a dark cavern with, with Harry and yeah. you go, one's out, Harry. Yeah. And I remember thinking, that could be taken the wrong yeah, way. Well, I went like that. <laughs> I went like that a bit, <laughs> with a one. Uh, but what a great cast to work with as well. I yeah. mean, someone I'm sure you'd worked with the past, because Maggie Smith, oh, you, yeah. you'd known I, her for Donkey I've known her since I was 23. You know, you mentioned Richard Harris. Uh, was he someone... Did you hang out with him, with O'Toole, back in the days when they were yeah, kind of wild? I knew them. I knew them. I knew Peter more than Richard. But, uh, yeah, I hang around in the Buxton Club in the 60s when getting pissed was normal. You don't do that anymore. Well, it seems that acting is, is taken more seriously now. I don't know if that's fair. Yeah, it's that... not so much fun anymore. People are more worried about it all. In the 60s at the National, it was just uh, easier somehow. I don't know. Um, I've seen uh, Sir Michael on stage. I saw you in Endgame, uh, the Beckett play, where you were with Lee Evans. Lee which Evans, yeah. Some people would have thought was strange casting, but I get the feeling you no, got on well. No, he was brilliant. We got on, I was best mates. But he used to plead with me every night not to make him laugh because he couldn't cope with that. So, uh, but I used to try. But here's a dark and serious play. 
uh, you're making laugh on stage. Is that that's kind of a dangerous thing to do? Isn't it? Well, it's, if you're skilled, you can do it without anyone knowing. <laughs> anyone knows as Lee. How would you? Uh, how would you do that? Well, how would you? Just on. The... <laughs> he pushed me around in a wheelchair all night. You know that? Yeah, yeah. And so I, I've got to do all sorts of tricks. So you would pretend to fart? Yeah. yeah. Under your breath? Yeah. And hope to crack him up? Just to get Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this is a kind of uh, considered a masterpiece of modern theatre. It is. Of course, Beckett and, and we you're... played it as such, you yeah, know. We yeah. didn't muck about. I mean, the, I didn't muck about when we get the audience, back to the audience, yeah, so yeah. you can have a laugh, you, you know. You mess around. Yeah. Um, but you, uh, you seem to be the go-to guy when people were doing Beckett. You've done an awful lot of Beckett, haven't you? I've done a hell of a lot of Beckett, and I'm doing one now. I'm just about to start. And uh, we've got... Uh, we had, we had no, no bookings for our four-week run until um, recently when we've... Uh, Eileen Atkins has taken over. Dame Atkins. And suddenly the bookings have shot up. Now it's packed out solid. I can't, I, it's, it's, this sounds intriguing, though. Yeah. This, uh, what, it's based on a radio play, or it is about a radio play? A radio play written in 1957 uh, for the radio. But in this, it's a play on stage. But we've only started rehearsing it, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. So you're thinking of doing it as if we're watching a radio play, yeah, is that Yeah, as you're watching a radio play. So we're there with scripts. We have to have scripts and uh, microphones. And we're reading the script, and that's all I know so far. But that must be, in a way, a dream because presumably it could be, you know, it could be a bit boring, me. Really, but presumably you don't have to learn the lines if it's no, and that's a relief, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I, I'm not very good at learning lines now, and uh, I've been in America where they put earplugs in my ears, and so they just play the lines to you over the over the time. So they tell you what to say. Yeah, wow. you just say it. That's how um, Marlon Brando used to work. Didn't yeah. You worked with Brando. I worked with Brando. Yeah. He was great fun, and um, he, he would c continually muck about by... He was playing a lawyer, a very important lawyer, and he would put, put a safety pin across his robe, and the people on the stage would say, you can't do that um, because that's not allowed. You couldn't wear... You know, I want it. Like a kid. Yeah. And then, just as the camera rolled, he'd take it out. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. Well, he sounds like you'd get on well with him. Oh, yeah. I work with the Brando, De Niro and Pacino. I've worked with all of them. Wow. So that's enough for me. Do you do accents and stuff like that? Can you do... Cos we've got uh, Mr Getter, who's French, of course. Yeah. And we've got John Bishop, who is yeah. a Lilliputian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you do... Can you do the Scouse? Which is a hard accent to do. I can't do it. I once did a film with Michael Caine. In, in, in Russia, <laughs> and I had to play a, a Russian interrogator, interrogating him. And at the end of the shot, he's, I said, what was my accent like, Michael? Because I was a Russian. Yeah. He says, very good. Started off in Russia, drifted over towards Spain, <laughs> was in Italy at one point, <laughs> then to France, and I ended up in Lewisham. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, I can't imagine him... <laughs> enjoying being in Russia, because I interviewed him once and he'd been in Malta, and I asked him what Malta was like, and he said it was f***ing terrible, yeah. just courgettes to eat every meal. <laughs> what, what was it like in Russia? Well, in Russia, he used to have food sent over from London <laughs> to his trailer. <laughs> what kind of food? Uh, ordinary stuff, you know, uh, pork pies and uh, sausages. <laughs> his wife used to bring it over on Fridays. And if you had to eat out, did he eat out in Russia? Did I'm he not Russian sure, food? I'm not sure. Yeah, I once had food with him in a restaurant, and he said to the waitress, who couldn't speak English, he said, I'll have my usual. But, and I said to her, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> and she said, one steak and chips with no f***ing Russian sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so All That Fall is the play you're in. What, what theatre is it at, Michael? All That Fall, the German Street Theatre. The German Street Theatre on the 9th of October. It's only on for four weeks, is that Only right? on for four weeks. For four weeks. And so if you want to go... Out. It's booked out a, few, a few spaces, I think. You've got to rush. OK, well, I'm going to get some. Yeah. Well, I don't uh, think you get in. Can I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Can I come and see you backstage afterwards? No. Oh. <laughs> and after that, do you know what you do? Do you have, like, a, a game plan? Do you have, like, a year or two years planned ahead? No, nothing. I just go from day to day. If I get a job, I'll do it. If I don't know. Have you been out of work for long periods? I guess all that. I don't think I've ever been out of work. Wow. Very rarely. That's I'm it. lucky. Mama Joe, I do anything they ask me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how lovely to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I will gladly sit here and chat to you all night, no. but unfortunately, we've got a French DJ who needs to get the Euro star home later. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, great to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Sir Michael Gambon. Thank that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Sir Michael Gambon, join us. After